Okay, Sunir, are you ready, my friend? He's got his camera on, he's been smiling, he's been busy in the chat box. Sunir, you and I are going to do this together, and you're going to have the first opportunity for hot seat coaching. So let's do this together, my friend. Good evening, welcome. Great to see you there. Welcome. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. If you can get your microphone a little bit closer to your face, that would be even better. Is it better? Yeah, okay, that's cool. much better. Okay, my friend, well, let's get clarity here. One of the first things we want to start with is what's your business goal and where do you want to be 12 months from today? Oh, okay, I would like to uh, start, off, start up an online business. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'd like to be 12 months from today is definitely be at least profitable. Um, get clear as to what I would like to be selling online. Uh, so with that I got to do a fair amount of research, got to find out what do people want, what's the need out there, can I fill in that gap, and uh, will there be, uh, well, 24 months from now, will the need still be as uh, robust as it will be 12 months from now? Okay. Excellent. Cool. So over the next 12 months, okay. there's going to be a lot of market research. Definitely. You're researching the needs. You know you want to have an online business. And you've also got to make sure that the needs still exist 12 months from now. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, where are you starting from? What are you currently doing? Where are okay. you in relationship to that 12-month goal? Okay. Um. I uh let's let's say let's just say I start from the bottom. I have got uh I haven't set up the online business yet. I'm a uh, currently I'm a trainer. Mm -hmm. uh, I do a lot of enrichment programs in schools. I do a bit of corporate uh, training as well. Um, I've dabbled with something online, but never really gone beyond stage one. If mm -hmm. I give the stage a level, and um so I I gone through some of the videos. I've uh but I've always got stuck in stage one meaning. Um, I never really got off the ground and um, never really had um, it moving as much as I would like forward. So it's always start, stop, start, stop, start. More, more stops than starts. <laughs> Good. Now, if I may just ask you a question. I, um, a moment ago, you said that you're, you're a trainer. You're doing yeah. enrichment programs. Yes. Um, when it comes to your online business, what do you want to sell? Do you want to sell a product or do you want to sell a service? Uh, uh, could I do both? Because I know what I'm good at. Uh, communication skills is one. And uh, I'm looking at something that parents would buy for their kids. Um, let's say if you are a parent and you want to get your kids to be good at public speaking, oral communication skills, these are lifelong skills I reckon they would need uh, into their adult life. So um, that's a service actually I, I, I do. and. Kind of difficult to sell it online unless I do a video like a Zoom session, like what I'm doing with you right now. Um, then, um, so that would be both a product and a service, I, I reckon. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we've got to consider in a business is how do we like to spend our money? Now, if we like to invest in education and we like to experience services like consulting and coaching and masterminds, if we like to spend our money on that type of thing, and we're a trainer ourselves, what we should be more focusing on is selling something that we really enjoy. So Sunir, I grew up uh, trading secondhand goods, and I was always buying and selling products, but I hated it. I hated selling things. I love experiences. I love going in business class. I love staying in five-star hotels. I love going out for dinner. I love staying at resorts. I want to travel. I want education. And what I figured out is that the things that I was really passionate about, the things that I sold really easily, were the things that I liked to buy. Mm -hmm. Things like cars don't interest me. I don't have a car. <laughs> I borrow my brother-in-law's. I say, hey, can I use your car? because I'm just not that interested in cars. Yeah. I've got a lovely home, but I don't buy carpets. I don't buy wall hangings. I've been buying a new television for the last seven years, 
but still haven't bought a television. <laughs> so <laughs> knickknacks and products don't really turn me on. So what I sell online is I sell educational products and services. So the products I sell are all digital programs or you're experiencing my science and technology tonight. These are the types of products that I sell because I love to do that. So I encourage you to find something to sell that you're really passionate about because if you're looking to sell a product that you're not really passionate about, we end up not having the motivation to pursue it through to the end. And I've been selling uh, digital trainings, coaching, service consulting online for 11 years. I love it. I still do it. And it's what I like to do. And it gives me a lot of motivation. So over the next year, why don't you start to have a look at things that you already have a lot of knowledge and history in? I don't know about you. You look you're like you're about 35, but I'm sure you've got about 45 or 50 years worth of knowledge up your sleeve. How old are you? 56. 56. Uh, See, so as, as, a, as a trainer, right. you're, you shouldn't be becoming less valuable. You should be becoming more valuable. The more hair you lose, the grayer your hair gets, the older you get, the bigger, bigger your belly gets. As a consultant, in a trainer, as an educator, the more valuable you become because you've got so much history and knowledge and you should be packaging that up, in my opinion. Yes, definitely. I mean, I've been doing trading for a better part of 23 years now. Um, so I know, I, I know I've got the knowledge and the experience. Uh, different kinds of people, not just kids, but adults as well. So trying to find a balance of how to package it to the correct. I, I prefer working with kids. That's my passion. Yeah. Adults well, follow, are... Follow that passion. <laughs> Follow that passion. And you're in the right place. Uh, Vince has helped me build my business. Vince has got an educational business. All of his speakers are educators and you're in the right place. So okay. if you want to do that and that excites you, remember parents today have more disposable income for education than they did in the past. My parents were uneducated. They didn't believe in education. They didn't believe in higher education. They sent me to a lovely school but when it came to university, they said, if you want to go to university, you've got to pay for it yourself. So it really wasn't believed in at that stage because they were all self-made millionaires and they never had education. So they thought, well, why does anybody else need it? <laughs> but we're learning today that education is very important. And I'm not saying that university education is the only way to educate. There's many forms of education. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we have a English tutor for both of my children. And they have English tutors every single week and we're willing to pay big dollars for them to have the best tutors. And if you know anything about Australians, Australians don't speak proper English. <laughs> That's why I let somebody else teach my children. <laughs> and plus, parents are busy these days. Yes. And if they can do it online and you don't have to send them to the bushy barn or the Anchi barn, that's also quite nice. Okay. okay, my friend. Well, we've got a baseline we want to work from. You want to start your own online business. You've got to do your research now. And you're starting from lots of history. You've got experience. You're already a trainer. You're convinced that communication skills are important. You love to work with kids. Okay. So let's explore your Hartman's value profile. And just to confirm, is this your assessment here? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, excellent. So we want to start here, and everybody else can do the same thing on your report. We want to start by having a look at the section that says empathy. Now, empathy is how you understand and value the impact your decisions will have on other people and the importance you assign to others as you make choices. Now, in the context of what Sunir is talking about here, he's already an educator. So he has to make decisions about different types of students and the parents or the people who are paying for their education. So Sunir, is it fair to say that for children, somebody else is paying for their education? Yeah. And the decisions that you make 
have to influence both the end user, which is the child, but also the sponsor, which is the parent. Yes. So you've Excellent. got to deal with people. Excellent. So when we explore your report here, what is your attention level? What is your attention level? Uh, when you're asking what's my attention level, are you talking about the business that I'm going to be embarking on? It Where your there. blue yeah. bar is, right on the screen there, your blue bar, yeah. what does it say? Yeah. It says attentive. Is that correct? Attentive. Yes. Attentive. Beautiful. So let's just get clarity on this. So what everybody else can do, you can go back to page five and we have the definition. So attentive is having a balanced and generally positive view of the dimension and the ability to pay attention to the dimension without losing perspective of other dimensions. And that's where you want to be. Attentive. Excellent. Now, if we go back to page number six, what is your clarity score? What's this one here? Clear. Clear. Excellent. We can go back to page five and you can see the definitions here. Clear. This is the ability to be in touch with key aspects of the dimension, but to overlook some aspects due to allowing some information in and filtering other information out. So we want to explore this and we want to see what that means. So okay. as we go through together, what we want to understand is your descriptor. So we're going to go through this and we're going to see if it's true or false for you. So it says here, you have a very good capacity to see and appreciate the inner worth and unique individuality of others. Is that true or false for you? That's true. True. Excellent. It also says you tend to shift from becoming overly trusting and optimistic about others to becoming cautiously discreet and critical of others. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you are uncertain of their intentions. Yes, this is definitely true. The more Have you me? get to know them, the more cautious you tend to be. <laughs> <laughs> and let's be honest. <laughs> Excellent. That's what we want. So it's fair to say that this is an accurate description of empathy. And what we now want to do is we want to get a greater understanding of what this means. So let's go back to the first statement. It says, you have a very good capacity to see and appreciate the inner worth and unique individuality of others. So Sunir, if you could give us an example of what that would look like in your current career, what would that look like? Okay, um, let's talk about training. But I have gone, um, when I've conducted training, right, sometimes I go beyond a little bit more. Let's say I've got a two-hour training. I, I, I push sometimes two and a half and three. You know, because I realize, hey, hang on, I've got time and I like the group. And so I tend to give it a little bit more time. Only for the stakeholders, I'm talking about the clients, okay, to see that hmm, this guy is giving more than what we have paying him for. Maybe next time we can push him to give us more for free, you know? <laughs> so you do it one time and that's it. You get taken advantage of. Um, it's okay for me to just do it once because I'm just looking at the kids. I'm looking at the clients, basically. It could be adults as well. Um, it's okay because I love what I do. That's the most important thing. I don't see I don't see the, the number of hours I'm putting in. Um, I see the smiles on the faces and I see, you know, I, I, I'm happy to get paid by patch on the back and say, well done, you know, uh, that, that, that turns me on more than, of course, I'm not saying money is not important. It is important. Uh, just to let you know, while I'm talking to you, my wife is sitting by the side. So she's watching every word I say, and if you see anything fly past me, you know, that <laughs> I, I just told you a lie. If I see the <laughs> so, slipper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so that's, that's why I, I feel sometimes I'm cautious to give a little bit more. Okay. Okay. So just to clarify this, uh, I'm just going to share what I've written down here. If you've got a two hour training, you might stretch it out to three and you're going to give more time to your clients. And then the more you give, 
then you start to see that others may want to take advantage of you. Let's push yeah. it out. He gave us an extra hour this time. It's now three hours. Can we get four hours from him? Oh. <laughs> and it actually happened today. It happened today. How many hours over did you go? Actually, it was a school. So they had, um, you know, they didn't tell me in advance that they have something in between and the students had to go off and come back in later. So I was supposed to finish at 12.45 and not finishing at 1.45. So I had an hour that I wasn't doing anything and wasn't paid for. So just sat in the room and enjoyed the air conditioning. So now, hot is, your, is your wife there? Can I see her face for a moment? Wife, oh. <laughs> how do you feel about your husband doing an extra hour of work and not getting paid for it? How do you feel about that wife? Hit him with that slipper. <laughs> See, once in a while it's okay, but not all the time. Yeah. Are they, is the school paying for the vegetables? Is the school paying for your electricity when he's doing it for free? Yes or no? No. No. <laughs> Who's paying for the fuel in the car? Who's paying for your children's education? <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> the boss is excellent. And so here, you'd be happy to get paid by pats on the back, but it's also an inner conflict because you know that you yeah. love what you do. The more you yeah. give for free, the more they want to take. And like today, you're giving away an hour of your time. Yes. Okay. If you have read my mission earlier, I did say, and I had this mission for many years, 20 over years, is to reach out and impact lives. And I've had this for the longest time. And uh, that's why a lot of my friends said, ah, that's why you're not successful, man. You're always giving stuff for free. <laughs> Shit. Oops, sorry. Beautiful. Well, let's keep exploring this. It says you tend to shift from becoming overly trusting and optimistic about others to becoming cautiously discreet and critical of others, especially yeah. when you are uncertain of their intentions. So what's an example of that in your current role? What would that look like? Okay, so for example, if I have given a task or rather I've given a, a gig to do and uh, I've done it well and then there are other people who come and probably are telling the client, hey, look, you know, I can do this for slightly cheaper than what you're paying Sunir. Um, and then the same people who are very pally to me and say, yeah, we're going to work together and all that and suddenly... <laughs> I hear about this from the great mind. Um, it's it's not nice because they are my friends, and you know when I, uh, it's a dog eat dog world. So it's it's not um, something that I would like to live by, and so I keep a distance with all these people, and that's why I tend to end up working alone, doing my own stuff. Um, kind of, uh, although I'm a people person, it makes me distrust people a little bit more once, you know. You know, is saying once bitten, twice shy. Twice bitten, never try. Try and bitten, probably go and die. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, happened more, happened more than a couple of times, actually. Okay, excellent. So we can see here that you've been taken advantage of and it's a conflict because you love what you do. Yeah. And we know it's important to love what we do. You also want to have a massive impact but it doesn't feel good to be taken advantage of, especially when somebody comes along and says, we're going to do it cheaper. You've given them more than they were bargained for, and now somebody can come in and undercut you. Yeah. And uh, what I heard from Vince a couple of days, I mean, during his class, I, I shouldn't be paid by the hour. You know, I feel that after 20 over years, um, it is not the hour that you're paying me for. It's the years of experience that I've had. Uh, I want to charge that way from, from now on, I suppose. Well, Sunir, in order for that to happen, we have to start to put more value on ourselves. And when I started coaching and consulting, I was earning around about $50 an hour being a leader. And my first goal was to replace my income. So my first client paid me $50 an hour. And then I thought to myself, what I gave them in that hour was worth more than $50. So I increased my price to $80 per hour. 
And then the next person that I worked with was a captain. And I solved his problem in 30 minutes worth of coaching. He paid for an hour, which was $80. And after 30 minutes, he said, I've solved this problem. That was fantastic. And then I thought, well, $80 for 30 minutes, it should be $160 for the hour. So I put my price up to $160. And I was already earning $160 per hour on my side hustle. And I thought to myself, I've got to work three hours on the aircraft to make that same type of money. And I thought to myself, what's possible? So I said to my wife, I'm going to increase my hourly fee to $250 an hour. And so you know what was a rude awakening for me? It was easier to sell coaching at $250 an hour than at $50 an hour. Really? And what was a big awakening was people who paid more appreciated it and they got better results. So back in 2016, I said to my wife, this coaching is too cheap. We're going to charge more. And I said, I'm going to start charging $500 per hour because my clients are coming to me. They're getting what they need in an hour and they don't have to go to 12, 18 month courses. They can get it in an hour. And you know what shocked me, Sunir? was I got better clients at $500 an hour than I did at $50 an hour. And then you know what I said to my wife? I said, I should take this to businesses. So I took the same product, the same service to a business and a business owner said, how much would you charge me to come and coach my team? And I said, are they leaders or are they managers? And he said, they're managers. And I said, well, if you want me to change train your managers, it's $1,250 per hour for a minimum of three hours at a time. And he said, it sounds too cheap. So I trained his managers. Then he said, how much is it to train the leaders? And I said, $1,750, not ringgits, dollars. And he said, how often can you come? I said, how often do you need me? And he said, every week. So I was earning in one hour what used to take me at least two weeks on the aircraft. And then I thought to myself, Sunir, what if a bigger business hired me? So in 2019, a company called me and they said, Daniel, we've got a big problem. How much would it be to come and consult us for 90 minutes? And I said, how soon do you need me? They said, we need you tomorrow. And I said, well, you know, I live in Taiwan. They said, we'll cover the flights. We'll cover the accommodation. How much for 90 minutes? And I said, $5,000. And they spat the water out of their mouth. And they said, that's a bargain. So they paid me $5,000 for 90 minutes of consulting. And I solved that problem in the organization that they weren't able to solve for two years. And they said, Daniel, that was the cheapest consulting we've ever had. And so the point that I want to make is it comes down to our self-worth and how much value we feel we can bring. So may I give you some feedback? Sure, sure. Appreciate now, it. the intention of my feedback is just to show you what I've discovered in your report. So if you turn to page 11, what you're going to find on page 11 is some developmental areas. And the areas where your limitations are in self-esteem, self-assessment, and self-control. So in order for you to charge more, the first thing you have to do is you have to boost your levels of self-esteem. It's how much you believe in yourself, how much you like yourself. It's how much you believe that you can impact people in that given hour. And it's the self-esteem that's going to determine your hourly rate. So my wife and I, our starting consulting rate in today's market is $750 per hour. We don't follow up people. If somebody says, Daniel, can you call me back? No, I'm too busy. If you want to join the program, I'll change your life immediately. I've got too many people to work with and I'm not calling you back. And other sales trying to say to me, Daniel, you're supposed to follow up. No. If they want me, they take me. I'm not following them up. 
they can take it now. I've got a list of people ready to work with me. So the first thing is, is you have to believe that you're worth the money. And then you only have to ask once for more money as a consultant and you set your new fee. Once I asked for 250, it never dropped back down. Once I went to 500, it never dropped back down. Once I went to 750, it never dropped back down. And my clients say, Daniel, you're expensive, but we can't find anyone better. So some of these clients have been paying me this over and over and over for seven, eight and nine years. But it comes down to self-esteem. So in your report, based on your Hartman's value profile, if you want to earn more, you've got to start to increase your levels of self-esteem and self-worth. And we always earn in proportion to our levels of self-esteem and self-worth. So let me go to the community. Give me a wave. Ladies and gentlemen, should you be earning more money than you are now? Should you be earning more money than you are now? Give me a wave. Should, be, should you be earning twice as much as you are now? Should you be earning three times as much? Should you be earning four times as much? Why aren't you? Have you asked for it? Have you asked your boss to double your income? Yes or no? Have you asked your boss to triple your income? Have you asked them to quadruple the income? See, what happens is oftentimes we know we should be earning more, but we lack the courage to ask for it. We also lack the courage to ask and then have to deliver more results. Does that make sense? So if you believe that you're worth more, you've got to start to ask for more. Does that make sense? Now let me ask you, are there people in your industry earning five times as much as you? Ten times as much as you? One of my programs that I sell at $750 per hour for, my mentor, she charges $7,500 per hour for. Imagine that. Yes, she's been doing it for 40 years, Sunir. But she gets paid $7,500 per hour. And she's book solid. Booked out. Daniel, uh, now, is there people out? earning more money than her? I know other consultants who charge $20,000 per hour. And yeah. you know what? People pay them in advance and they also say, if you want me, you've got to hire me at a minimum of four hours at a time. I know people making $100,000 in four hours. And you know what? They're booked out. Why do they get it and others don't? It's because they're asking for what they're worth. Does that make sense? Excellent. Sydney, yes, your question, my friend. No, I, I see some of the hands go up uh, from the community. I just want to find out. I mean, are they are they being paid because the market rate has, is such and it is difficult to ask for more because the business will go elsewhere? It has nothing to do with the marketplace. Right. Nothing to do with the marketplace. It's about the value we bring. So, Sunny, if I came to your business and I was able to take your business from 100000 in sales to a $1 million in sales, how much would that be worth to you? It would be worth $900,000, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so would you invest half a million dollars to get your business from 100000 to a $1 million in a year? Definitely. You would, wouldn't you? Because you yeah. know if you could get it to a million and it only costs you half a million, the very next year you can do it by yourself and you make another million. Right. And so what these people are doing is they're bringing value in any market. And in the world of business, it's about helping people make or save money. If I can reduce costs in your business by $10 million a year, 
Would that be worth a million dollars to you? Would you spend a million to save 10 million? You would, wouldn't you? So it doesn't matter what's happening in the economy. It's about the person knowing that they're worthy of that. And then, so if you said to somebody, you've got a $10 million problem and I can solve it for a million dollars and they say that's too expensive, what would you do? <laughs> You'd laugh I mean, in their face and say, that's okay. If you don't see value in that, I'm going to cross the street and I'm going to solve the problem for your competitor. When I sell services to real estate agents, they try to negotiate my fee of $30,000. I say, you've got a $100,000 problem. I've got a $30,000 solution. You're going to make $70,000 immediately. And if you're not willing to pay me, it's okay. I'll go next door. And then you're going to have to compete against me and them. What do you want to do? So when we look at your report, my friend, page 11, it comes back to you managing you. It's all about self-esteem. And that's really where you need to focus your personal development over the next 12 months. Is your wife agreeing with me? <laughs> wife, do you yes. agree that if you had more confidence, you'd ask for more and you'd <laughs> stop giving away? So what happens, Sunia, is when we give away our time, it's because we often lack the confidence. The confidence to say no. Yeah. Have you ever been right. to a law have you ever been to a lawyer before? Uh yeah. I do. They charge in six it. they charge in six minute intervals. And you can sit in front of the lawyer as long as you want and he'll just charge you every six minutes. And you've got to think like these professionals. You gotta think like them. I have a lawyer and I learned this that there's no small talk. I walk in, I just get down to business. And if I'm there for 30 minutes, he charges me for 30 minutes. And if I ask him how the family is and he talks to me for another six minutes, he charges me for another six minutes <laughs> because right. his time is valuable. Right. And we've got to get into the habit. Would everybody agree? Does anybody disagree? Nobody disagrees. When you fly business class, you get from Kuala Lumpur to Dubai in the exact same time. But you have to pay to play. If you want to go into business class and experience that level of service, you've got to pay. And what does the airline do when you fly to Dubai? Once the aircraft once lands, lands, they turn off the television. They say, get off the aircraft. Because they've sold that seat and that aircraft in the next 60 minutes is going to fly to another country. Nothing personal, they just say, get off the aircraft. <laughs> and I think, my friend, you should start doing the same thing and value yourself and value your time more. Do Thank your you. hour, hang up the boots, go home, and if somebody wants to pay you more money, go for the dollars and then build your own business. Right. Okay, Thanks. well done, my friend, well done, well done. Right. Thank you, community. Thanks for the support. <laughs> Thank you, wife. <laughs>